It's Eats Holly back again, Super Sports Media, talking heads, talking hoops talk, and I have Richard DeLeon. Yes, sir. And we have a special guest with us. Go ahead, Coach. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Coach Noe Cantu. I'm the head coach at Converse Judson High School. Coach, we go low. We go, we go, we, I'm just jump right into it. We go back a ways. And uh, with going back a ways, we all started at uh, Cole High School. And I know I was going to, I asked, I sent you some questions, but I wanted to, I want you to kind of just go over the difference of going from 3A to 6A. Um, I just think the difference is there's a lot more kids. Um, you know, obviously at a at the 3A, it's a bit smaller numbers, uh, smaller teams. Um, you know, coming over here to 6A level, uh, you know, you got more you got more teams, and with more teams, you got more players. Um, you know, obviously the talent pool, I guess you would have is more. Um, you know, I thought we had phenomenal players at Cole, um, but you just got to you just got you got a lot more depth here at Judson. So uh, kind of makes you have to be a little bit more creative as a coach. Uh, got to find a way to play uh, more people, different numbers, um, you know, run, you know, different sets, different defenses to kind of kind of keep everybody kind of kind of engaged and involved. Um, so, like I said, I, I think the main thing is just the numbers and the depth of, of that. You know, like I said, we, we were fortunate enough to have a lot of talent at Cole. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of familiar with the talented kids that we have. Um, just got a couple more of them here. So that kind of leads to my first question. You've been doing this with nine years now as a head coach. Yes, sir. Um, actually, man, I've only been a head coach for seven years. So this will be my eighth year. Seven, um, eight. OK, I thought I thought you were going into nine. No, I, I, so I gave you an extra there. year over at Cole then. Yes, yeah, so I was over there for six years. Um, and then this will be my this will be my second year at Jetson. So this will be my eighth year as a head coach. So kind of still kind of relatively new into it, I guess. Kind of started out kind of young, which is fortunate enough for that. And the, the great part is you made the playoffs every year mm -hmm. with doing that, both 3A and now 6A. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you how do you contribute to that success or what is the con contribution to that success? Um, you know, obviously, I think you got to have some really talented players. Um, you know, I, I I've been fortunate enough. I think the the basketball gods have been have been really good to me. Um, you know, being your first head job was being at Cole. Um, you know, that's one of the best best basketball programs for sure in three A. Um, then obviously getting the job at Judson that that's one of the best basketball jobs in six A. So um, you know, obviously, I've been blessed to be at some really good spots. I've had some phenomenal basketball players. Um, and I think you got to have a lot of talent to win. And we've done that. Um, but I also think we've kind of maximized our talent. You know, um, I, at the end of the year, I always sit down with our coaches and I was like, is this as far as this team could have gone with us? And I think almost every year that I've sat down, I was like, yeah, I mean, we went as far as we could go with this team. And so I feel like we've maximized our talent level. Um, and we haven't, you know, just kind of blown off the talent that we have or wasted years. And uh, I think that's just a credit to, to our guys, to our coaching staff for just being dedicated every day. Cool. And, and you, you seem to be a regular into the playoffs. Uh, so can you give us some insights into your philosophies and maybe your 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 strategies and systems that you have in place? to help your teams become successful? No, um, you know, I think it starts just kind of with our work ethic in practice. Um, you know, we, we got a high, you know, we have a high work ethic there. We, we're very competitive in practice. Uh, we treat it kind of like a game. We always have a scoreboard involved with whatever drill we're doing. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a layup drill, it doesn't matter if it's a scrimmage, whatever the case is, we got a number on the score. So we're constantly in a competitive mode trying to win. Um, and everything that we do. And, and so I think it kind of translates to the games. Um, our guys are super competitive. If you ever watch the teams that I've had, um, they're super physical, super aggressive and, and, and super competitive. But I think that starts in practice. 
Um, you know, we're we're highly attentive to detail. I think that's something that that I, I pride ourselves on, and our staff does a really good job of of you know paying attention to detail and getting our kids to pay attention to detail. We're big in the film room. Um, we're big in our offense and defensive schemes and things like that. So I think just kind of the the little things that we do, um, you know, as far as X's and O's and ops, they just staying really competitive every day in practice and in games. And that's one tidbit I got from you, Coach, uh, that, that film study. You showed me how important that film study is. And um, mm-hmm. and I, I believe that was some of our success as far as on the AAU side of it. I think I had with James and the guys I've coached and even going on to our 27s, where uh, Coach Anderson's coaching now. Mm-hmm. That film study is important. So, again, I, I grabbed some nuggets from you on that. And that that is that is something that's been helping us be successful. So kudos to you and what you're doing. You're definitely a, a, a trendsetter. But – Going to um, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. And we're gonna talk player development. If you, I've seen you make players better, and I know you don't get a lot of time with them and having the athletics and then the basketball time. But what are some of your approaches and strategies did you use to make sure that player development is happening for your guys with that short amount of time you have? You know, I think one thing that I do is, um, you know, I actually, I actually like to go to like, you know, a lot of our guys play AAU basketball. Or they have trainers or whatever the case is. Um, I actually like to go to one of their practices, AAU or, or, or one of their trainers workouts. Um, and I do that because I don't want to teach the same thing that they're being taught already. Um, so usually I go to a practice or I go watch their trainers, uh, watch them work out with their trainer. And I kind of see what they're doing and what they're getting or kind of what they're getting coached at. And so then we kind of gauge our player development off of what they are already doing, meaning we're going to do something different. You know, a lot of times like we, we stay away from like if you come to one of my practices or workouts, like we're not going to do a lot of dribble series kind of moves and cone work stuff. They get a lot of that in AAU and they get a lot of that with their trainers. So there's no point of me doubling down on that stuff. Um, so like as far as our player development is, man, we constantly want them to work on their weaknesses. I'm big on doing that, trying to make them uncomfortable. Um, you know, I know our guys struggle over here a little bit with some shooting stuff and, and stuff like that. So we do a lot of shooting here. Um, so basically, you know, we, we kind of try to get the total package out of our kids. Um, but that kind of starts with our coaching staff. Um, like I said, we, we try to watch them work out AAU, watch them play at AAU, watch them work out with their trainers. Um, and so we don't want to do the same thing that they're already getting. So um, I think that's been a big thing for us. Um, the workouts are different um, from what they're doing in AAU and then what they're doing with their trainers. And obviously that that makes our guys more well-rounded. Um, and, you know, at the same time, like we challenge our kids, man, and we coach them hard and we push them, we put them in uncomfortable situations and we tell them their weakness. I think a lot of coaches sometimes are, are scared to tell their players um, what they struggle with. Um, and, and I'm not, you know, and, and, and sometimes I look like the bad guy. But, you know, I think a lot of times by the end of the season, end of the year, um, they're a little bit more thankful because they've gotten a lot better in areas that they weren't good at. Um, and so that's just something that, that that we try to do with our player development. And we track a lot of stuff, too. I'm a big stat guy. I'm a big analytical guy. Um, we track a lot of their numbers in practice and in games, um, whether it's, you know, what how they're shooting, what percentage they are from the free throw line threes and different drills that we do. Um, and so we constantly know where we're at all the time. I'm, I'm going to stay with development. Uh, what role does strength and conditioning play into the development of your players and how do you implement it into your program to help them reach their maximum potential? Okay. So I'm big in that. So, um, so right now we're lifting five days a week. Um, so our guys are lifting five days a week. So Tuesday and Friday, we lift during the period. And um, then uh, we, we lift like half during the period and then we'll do basketball stuff Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're doing basketball straight through the period, but they come after school. Um, so we're lifting five days a week right now. We're fortunate enough to have a strength coach here at Judson, um, and he works out those guys. Um, something that we've done new this year that we're because we're really putting emphasis on our on our bodies and our players. So we're lifting five days a week, and then each uh, each one of our kids um, they get a protein shake after each workout. Um, so they're getting five protein shakes a week, and they're getting a week, and they're getting five lifting days. Another thing that we spent some money on this year is, you know, I, I usually visit a lot of colleges and got a lot of college buddies of mine. Um, and it's what a lot of these colleges are doing. So it's kind of it's called a it's like a Titan GPS chip deal now. So we're going to have our guys and they're coming in this week, actually. And so our guys are going to wear uh, this chip and it's kind of like a sports bra. OK, and then they're, I mean, there's a jersey is going to be over it so they, no one's going to see it. Um, and in this chip, it's going to track everything. So it's going to track their heart rate. It's going to track their explosive effort, their sprint effort, how high they're jumping. 
Um, so I'll know in real time. And then at the end of the day, it'll shoot me a, it'll shoot me like a, like a report of, you know, who's like, whose heart rate was high, who was jumping their highest, who was sprinting their hardest. Um, so we'll be able to tell who's really working hard in real time every day. Um, so we're really trying to maximize, like I said, our, our potential, not just our strength and athleticism, but our work ethic. Um, and so these are all different things that we're doing um, here at Judson this year because I'm big on making sure our guys are, are getting better, um, you know, not just basketball wise, but physically as well. Is that the same stuff you see in the soccer players? I think yeah. a lot of soccer mm -hmm. players wear them at like the World Cup and stuff. You see them yeah, them yeah. So it tracks time. everything. It'll track their distance. Like I said, it's going to track how, how, how their average speed, their average heart rate. Um, you know, we got guys that, that really can jump, you know, I mean, they're, they're super athletic, um, but this deal will tell me like, you know, we may be doing a, some layup drill or some rebounding drill. Um, and I'll know if they're really jumping as high as they can for this rebound, if they're jumping as high as they can for this layup or whatever the case is. Um, and so we'll be able to track those things. Like I said, it's what a lot of colleges are using. It's, it's, it's a good price tag for us. Um, but you know, like I said, we're just trying some new things this year to try to maximize um, our, our players, their bodies and everything like that. And a lot of high schools don't have the same luxury that we do here at Judson. Um, so we're kind of thankful for that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're giving giving everything we can for our kids. Again, trendsetter. That's awesome, coach. I saw that before. Also, I saw that in uh, when I went to one of the um, University of Texas workouts. Yeah. That's the first time I saw it. So, again, yeah. man, I love it. I love it. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and you going from the only reason I'm keep mentioning as far as Cole, because I want to make sure everybody understand and know that, yes, you made that that or that program a top level program to where those one of the best in the state, not just the city, but the state. And now you're in, in Judson doing the same, kind of maneuvering in the same way. Your culture you brought from Cole to now and you're you're, you're there in, in Judson. How are you kind of maneuvering and to make that culture what it is to be a winning culture? Because that's hard to do, coach, when you got a lot of athletic kids to where though they can jump the highest and run the fastest and still find a way to put the ball in the hole. How yeah. do you make it and transfer to make it make them understand that they have to do the some tangible things? Yeah, just trying to keep everybody together. Um, you know, I'm big on culture stuff. I think anybody that's been around my program uh, would, would know that that I'm big on that stuff. Um you know, some of the things that we do is, um, you know, I, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to coach, coach great players and great, great teams. Um, and I'm fortunate enough, those guys, they want to come back. I can't tell you how many guys have come back to even to Judson to, to, to work out with our guys or to talk to our guys. We had Vince in here uh, last week. You know, he's playing at St. John's right now. Um, you know, we've had Silas in. We've had Trey in. We've had different guys that have played at the highest level and have played for me. Um, they come back and they talk to our guys about what they're going through and what they got to do to get to this level. Um, you know, and not just that, but like I said, every Monday um, we have our, our culture talks. So like um, we'll show them a video. Uh, everybody's got a journal. Uh, and these guys write um, on the video like, you know, like last Monday was about like just um, just being coachable. Um, and so, you know, we watch this video. Um, they're writing their journal about different ways they can be better at being coachable. Um, we kind of get up. They kind of stand up. I'll call a couple of them to stand up and share about it. Uh, and then we talk about it as a whole. Um, and so that's one of the things that we do on Mondays. Uh, another thing that we do is every every day, every watch well, you say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday through Friday, every day, um, every every kid in our program, they get a text at eight in the morning. They get a text at eight at night. So we kind of have a quote of the day. Um, and so we send it to them at eight in the morning and then at eight p.m. So it's kind of something that the first thing we, we want our guys to see when they wake up, something positive, something, something to get them ready for the day and getting ready for practice. And then we send it to them again at eight at night, just kind of just kind of one of the last things they see before they go to bed. Um, and so that's Monday through Friday. That's everybody in our program. They're going to get that text. Um, and, and so, like I said, and then we'll talk about it during our workout as well. Um, but like I said, I, I think what's what's helped us with those things and our culture is that, you know, I, I don't have a lot of selfish players. And I think we kind of nip that stuff in the butt with some of the stuff that we do. Um, our guys are big on sharing the basketball, not just sharing the basketball and playing, but just sharing success. Um, you know, we're big on being humble and doing things the right way. Um, but I think, like I said, it's just a lot of those little things that we give our guys daily. Um, and like I said, on Mondays, you know, those character talks, they're, they're really good for us. Because I think, you know, establishing the culture, establishing how to win um, on the court and off the court, you know, I think that, that that translates. You know, I think a lot of times everybody's so focused on winning on the court, and we certainly are here. Um, but I think if we can win off the court, too, that kind of it kind of translates to the court as well. Um, and not just that, but like I said, I, I'm proud of our guys because, um, you know, especially being over here at Jetson, you know, 
um, you know, different backgrounds, different kids. But I feel like, um, you know, we're, we're making a trend of like, you know, you come to our practices, you're going to hear those guys. You know, when a coach is talking, they're stop talking. They'll look at they'll look at you in the eyes and no one's moving and no one's doing anything. You know, that wasn't the case when I first got here. Um, but, you know, I think people would be surprised coming to a workout over here, just how engaged our guys are and how bought in they are. Right. And and on this, you know, when with Coach Talley and myself, we always try to reach out to some of the younger players. And uh, that's what this platform is all about. So, you know, when we're talking about that. We like to talk to our younger players, like the middle school players, the kids that might be coming to your school soon. How do you identify and bring players into your program? And what types of traits are you looking for, not just on the court, but off the court from these kids that are wanting to be a part of your program that might be in seventh or eighth grade right now? Just speak to those kids and how you're, you know, what you're looking for. You know, as far as like our our, our junior high feeders, man, uh, our feeders are just in middle school and Woodlake. Um, you'll you'll see me at a lot of their games. You know, I'm I'm gonna be present at their games. They're gonna see me there. Um, and so we want those guys. I want those guys to know that I'm interested in them. We want them to come here. Um, we have a junior high night on uh, one of our games. We'll have it during a district game, where we we invite our junior high uh our junior high basketball teams. They come and they get in free and they watch the game. They come down at halftime, get to take a picture. Um, we want to kind of present our 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 program to them, and, and we want them here. Yeah, at the same time, you know, what we look for is just guys that are bought in, guys that believe in what we do um, and that want to make our program better. You know, I don't I don't want selfish kids. or I don't want kids that are about themselves. Um, and I make that very, very clear. Um, I'm not about myself at all as a, as a coach. Um, and, and I try to ooze that off to my kids. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, what we want from kids here is, um, you know, I, I've coached phenomenal players. i um, been lucky to do that. Um, but man, they, they've been great teammates. Um, they've been hard workers. Um, I don't want talented kids that aren't going to work hard and, and are not great teammates. Um, and, you know, I've passed up on kids even when I got here um, that have an abundance of talent, a glow of talent. Um, but they may not be bought into me or bought into this culture. Um, and so we'll pass up on talent. You know, I, I've passed up on talent at both schools, at Cole and at Judson, um, just because I felt like, you know, um, they're not going to be bought into what we want to do, whether it's on the court or off the court. Um, so we're just looking for the total package of a kid. Obviously, we want them to be super skilled and talented in basketball. Um, but they got to make their grades and do right. You know, I think one of the things that we changed when we got here to Jetson, um, you know, my first year was last year. Um, the first nine weeks, our whole program, freshmen through seniors, not one kid failed one class. Um, and then our second nine weeks, we had one kid fail one class. Um, and, you know, that wasn't the case when we got here. So we're big on a lot of stuff. We track almost everything that these guys do, whether it's their tardies, their grades. And so we're trying to keep guys on the right track. And those are the kind of guys that we want in the program. So while you mention that, Coach, uh, let's look at a few obstacles that I know you probably had to deal with. You don't got to say what they are, but just how have you, you know, with that transition going from Cole to Judson and just getting everybody to buy in. What are some of the obstacles that you're dealing with or you dealt with that you've you you you've hand, handled and turned to a positive? And again, you don't have to say any specifics or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, I think just being um, I think just being transparent with people, you know, uh, whether people agree with you or not, got to be transparent with them, got to be truthful. Um, you know, I'm never a guy that's going to bend my rules or, or bend my morals or whatever, you know, um, I'm going to stick to what I, I, I feel is right. Um, and I think people appreciate honesty, whether it's, whether it's players, whether it's the community, the school, parents, whoever the case may be. Um, I think people appreciate honesty and, and, and I'm always honest with, uh, with our players. Um, and I, I think that's a big thing. I think also when you don't address things, you know, we're transparent in the moment. And I tell our coaches that's something that's important is being transparent in the moment. Right. So like if someone's doing something that they shouldn't be doing in practice, I don't care who it is. We got to be transparent in the moment. Right. Don't tell them after practice. Hey, man, I didn't like what you did here. Not like we're going to address it as soon as it happens. Um, and so I, I think not letting things linger and not letting things, you know, pass by and ignoring stuff. Um, you know, I, I think that's helped us through a lot of obstacles, you know, when something arises, you got to deal with it in the moment, um, because if you don't deal with it in the moment, it just gets worse and wor or it gets worse and worse. Um, and then you got a major problem on your hands. I feel like we've addressed situations in the moment, got it out the way and moved on. Um, and that's just something that I feel that you've got to do, um, you know, whether it's coaching your kids or whatever the case it may be. And I know we talked a lot on the show about one of the important factors in being an athlete 
coming up is learning how to deal with adversity. Mm -hmm. um, can you re recall in your coaching career a game or a season where your team faced adversity and how you were able to lead them to overcome that adversity uh, to be successful in that moment? Uh, just like, what does it take to do that, to, to lead a team through adversity? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the first time we actually won the state championship there at Cole was, uh, that was an adverse year. One, because um, we had got to the state championship the year before um, and we didn't get to play the state championship. They canceled it with COVID. Um, so the next year we were expected, we felt like we were going to go back there and win it. Well, like two weeks before school started, our best player, Vince, uh, he's a five-star guy. Uh, he decides he's going to a prep school. Um, so that's like two weeks before school starts. And so like you have all these big goals and dreams and, and plans and, and then your best player. Um, so to say he, he, he informed you that she's going to a prep school, which we understood. And, and we get it, man. Uh, no hard feelings against that. Like I said, me and Vince got a great relationship, super close. Um, and that was the best movement for him, for sure. Um, but like I said, you know, put our team in a, in a tough situation, um, just losing your best guy and, and, and trying to figure out what you're going to do with, with two weeks, with school starting in two weeks. But um, you know, we decided then and there, I think we called a meeting the next day and we just said, look, man, we're not going to make excuses, you know, um, whether we have this guy or that guy, uh, we're not going to make excuses this year. So if we lose, I said, it's on us. It's not on anybody or there's no particular reason. If we lose, it's because we didn't do good enough um, as players, as a program, as a coaching staff. Um, and so I, I think that was a that was an adverse situation. But I think keeping our guys together was the biggest thing um, and telling them that we can still do it. Um, no matter what. And I, and I think it, it, it gave our guys, other guys, opportunities, um, gave them a bigger role to do different things. Um, and it worked out for the best of us. Um, <clears throat> like I said, even despite, you know, a five star leaving our school, uh, we ended up getting back to the state tournament and, and getting back to a state championship and actually winning the state championship. And I remember that that was that was uh, again, that was a very, very proud moment to be part of the Cole family and to watch that. That was great for you guys. Um, scouting and, and watching and getting ready for your games. I think you're one of the coaches that I've seen do a tremendous job at that. Again, you know, having James Livingston and, and, and Silas Livingston in the household and watching them and bringing home the reports and all. Can you kind of just, without divulging too much information, can you kind of share, <laughs> I know, right? Can you kind of share how, uh, What's the thought? Let's, let's put it like this. What's the thought process behind scouting and getting ready for your next game? Yeah, it's funny. You know, I get a lot of got a lot of emails from a lot of coaches from across the state about kind of what we do in preparation for stuff, just because I feel like our guys are detailed and, and know exactly what's coming. Um, you know, we have a scout report on everybody we play. I know sometimes people just do it in, in maybe in district or in the playoffs. And we, we're going to every game that we go into, our guys got a scout report. And, and obviously it's a lot of work from the coaches and stuff like that. But um you know, so we kind of do here and, and without going kind of in too detail, do, too detail about what we do. Um, we take our schedule kind of at the beginning of the year. Um, and, and like I said, like like, for instance, we may be playing. I think we're playing Madison first. Then we play Madison, Wagner and Clark. Like those are our first three games. Right. So we'll give it to our assistants. Like I may have uh, Madison. Uh, Coach Logan may have Wagner. Uh, Coach Johnson may have Clark. Um, so those guys are working on their reports, you know, two or three weeks in advance, you know. Um, so everybody's got everybody's got a game. I'm going all in on the Madison game. Uh, Coach Logan's going all in on the Wagner game. Johnson's going all in on the Clark game. So as soon as our game is over, like maybe Madison's first, I'm presenting the uh, the report, uh, the pro uh, the scouting report to our guys. I'm running over the offenses. I'm doing everything, talking about personnel, all that stuff. And maybe we play them on a Tuesday. Um, and that Wednesday, you know, we already got another report ready because that other coach he's been working on that weeks ahead. Um, and so we kind of just track it down like that. So we're constantly ready for everybody. And, and that gives our coaches a role. Um, and it also kind of stay it keeps us, you know, kind of up to date with who we're playing and what we do. So um, that's one of the big things that we do. Obviously, we get film. Uh, we clip we clip offenses and, and, and th different things, personnel. Um, and one of the things that we do is, like I said, we, we spent a lot of money on on our huddle program. So. You know, we may get five or six films on whoever we play, and it's not so much that we're going to watch five or six films, but we can shoot it and, and get a report off of each of those games. So, like, we may play some team, and we got five films on them. And although I didn't watch all five films, um, I have their numbers through five games. You know, he may be shooting 42% from the three. So we have real-life stat numbers. Um, so it helps us with our reports on how we're going to guard people and different things like that. Uh, but I'm big on those stuff. I, I never like to go to a game not knowing uh, any, not knowing what's coming or who can do what. 
um, and things like that. And if you go to any one of our games, you'll hear, you'll hear us. You'll hear our you'll hear our coaches calling out the plays, calling out the inbounds. We'll know the words. We'll know the terminology. Um, so, like I said, we, we just try to give our kids the best opportunity to be successful. Um, never want to leave a game thinking we could have done more. And I feel like the majority of times, whether we win or lose, we feel like we gave it our best for sure. Well, real quick, Richard, um, when I talk to all your, your your former players, a lot of them, from Silas to Jordan to Trey, uh, now James, they say um, you're one of the best coaches out here. Um, that get their, get them or got them ready for the next level. Because a lot of the things that you're instilling on your players, yeah, they're seeing it next level. So it's not mm -hmm. like a surprise to how much film study that you yeah. actually spend or how much um, a, a scouting report really is and how far it's broken down. Because, you know, I was, you know, privileged to see actual scouting report from you and it's very detailed. So, again, I, I commend you on that and kudos to you and just, hey, man, just keep doing that, man. You do a great yeah. job. and. And and they'll they'll they're all appreciating you after, uh -huh. as soon as they get to that next level, they like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, mm -hmm. man, I was so ready, and coach got me there. So mm -hmm. I promise you, coach, keep doing what you're doing, man. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah. I think we can agree that in the short amount of time that you've been a head coach, because you're still relatively uh, young, uh, yeah. you've been fairly successful, and that takes a lot of work and takes a lot of preparation. Um, how do you balance? the amount of time that's required for you to become successful as a head coach with other responsibilities like teaching or administration duties, or even just your personal life, how do you maintain a healthy, you know, balance in your life when it comes to the amount of preparation you need here and all the other things in your life? Yeah. Well, that's something, something I'm definitely working on. Um, and I, I think this year I've kind of made a decision too, that I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more balanced. Um, I think, you know, obviously, too, when I'm more balanced, I'm more like level headed. I'm, I'm, I'm a better coach as well. Um, so, you know, that's something I'm trying to work on. I think when I first became a head coach, man, I was just working eight to eight, uh, eight in the morning, eight at night. And, and I was driving myself crazy, um, you know, during the season and, and in my own personal life. So it's something I'm working on for sure. Um, but I think the other thing, I think one of the things that maybe I do different maybe than than most coaches, I know some do a lot, but. I, I delegate a lot and I don't just delegate like busy work to my coaches. Like I give them a, a true voice in our program, man. Um, like I said, if you, if you came to one of our practices, you would not think I'm the head. If you didn't know anything about me or the program, you wouldn't think I'm a head coach. Um, you know, our assistants, they're running the whole practices. They're talking, they're doing everything. I'm more just walking around and kind of, kind of just kind of throwing little nuggets to our guys or seeing something that I missed, but I let our assistant coaches run everything. Um, and it gives them great practice because um, they're going to be a head coach soon. We got some really good ones for sure. Um, but I think that that's kind of kept, kind of kept me more balanced over the last couple of years. And especially this year, taking a little bit, even more of a step back. Um, you know, we, we got, you know, our assistants are, are they're running practices. They're coaching the guards in the post and post and guard drills um, one of them calls all the imbalance, one of them calls all the sidelines, you know, plays. And so, you know, giving those guys more of a voice and a role, um, and it allows me to take a step back and kind of uh, stay fresh, you know, I guess I would say. Um, but at the same time, like I said, um, you know, I want to be fresh when, when the games matter the most. Um, and so that's something that I do. And then, you know, just same thing, you know, um, trying to get home as early as I can right now maybe is a, is a key. Um, just because we, we haven't officially started practice because I know once practice starts, you know, I'll have longer days. But um, just kind of just doing different things to, to get away from basketball, too. Um, and I think it, it kind of consumes me sometimes. So kind of getting out, hanging out with friends, going back home to Victoria, um, just kind of being able to reset. Uh, I notice that a lot of times when I reset and uh, you know, I'll come back to work on Monday, uh, and I'm usually ready to go. All right, Coach, last question. Uh, how are you – you have a great relationship with a lot of coaches, uh, college and high school, and you've sent some guys to some great schools. Uh, you know, you sent Trey off to California. You sent you got Silas here, to UIW. Um, you got James in Kingsville. Um, again, I, I know you didn't coach Logan last year, but Coach Logan, I think you had an influence on that. I'm sure. How are you able to maintain those great relationships? To where, as though if you were talking, I know you're young yourself, but if you were talking to a brand new coach out there getting started, what are some of the things you would tell them to help them understand the relationships you have with your high school and college coaches? Yeah, I think one of the things is just kind of like just just venturing out and, and going out. Like, you know, I, I know every every summer, almost every summer, 
um, I, I go to a college, you know, I, I've been to UNLV's workouts. I've been to UTEP's workouts. I've been to Arizona state. Um, I've been to different, I've just been to a lot of different places. And, and so like, you know, um, you know, I'll email colleges all the time about, Hey man, can I come for a workout? You know, can I come watch a workout? Whatever the case may be, can I spend a weekend? Um, and just trying to learn everything I can. Um, and, and I think you just got to do those things. Even when I was a young coach, um, you know, I, I would go to different high schools, uh, some of the best high schools, um, and, and watch them work out as well. Um, and I always constantly want to get better. And I think, you know, when you reach out to people like that and show a genuine interest, um, you know, uh, you establish relationships, you know, and that's something that's been big for us. And then obviously I've, I've had some great players that have gone on to some different colleges. Um, and, and, you know, when you send guys to colleges, um, you know, a lot of colleges they're they're always reaching out to you, um, and seeing if you got anybody coming up or, um, you know, what, who else should we be looking at? You know, we get a lot of call. I get a lot of calls all the time. And even if it's just not about my kids, like they'll, they'll call me all the time. I can't tell you how many colleges have said, Hey, what do you know about this kid? And, and he's, in, he's from San Antonio, you know, and he's not my kid. Uh, but they'll ask me, what do I know about him? Um, and, and so, like I, I said, I, I think just kind of reaching out to, to different schools and getting out there um, and going to visit on your own. Um, that's something that's a great way to do it, you know. Um, and like I said, I, I've had to spend my own money to go to different places, but it's been fine. You know, I, I've learned a lot of basketball um, from those experiences. Um, and then also, you um, been able to establish relationships and I think just helping people. Um, you know, I've never been a guy that, um, never been a guy that, you know, likes to keep everything to myself. You know, I, I, like I said, man, you, we get a lot of emails all the time about different things that we do, whether it's a scout report, whether it's our press break or whatever the case is. Um, and we invite guys to our practice. We invite other high school coaches to our practices, which we've had guys come in and watch us work out. I'll send them anything that they need from us. Like I said, we're highly detailed in, in everything that we do. So we have like our play, our playbooks on online and we have our drills online. Um, so, you know, sometimes there's a coach like, hey, man, I saw this drill that y'all did before a game. You know, how do you do it? And I can just send them the clip, you know, because I, I record. We had every drill in our program is 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 uh, is in a is on video. So anybody that likes something that we do, we just send them that video and they have it. Um, but I think just willingness to help people and share your thoughts and share your share your stuff. Um, you know, I think hopefully that gives you good credibility with with people um, and also just doing things the right way. Um, I feel like I feel like everywhere we've been at Cole and at Judson, you know, we've done things the right way. We've done we haven't you know, we're not out recruiting kids or cheating or, or doing things like that. We're going to coach the guys that are in there and, and who we have. And I think a lot of I think a lot of coaches, especially in the high school ranks, they they, they respect you for doing it the right way because. It's kind of the wild, wild west right now with, with transfers, even in the high school. I know it's crazy in college, but it, it's goodness. I, I, I lose track of, of kids of where they're at, even in high school now. It's crazy. I know that is crazy, and I, it just uh, just baffles me. But at the same time, I guess, that, you know, it's going to be what it is. So, I'm, you know, no comment on that, that part. But, hey, um, Coach, thank you for allowing us to spend this time with you, getting to know you a little bit better. Um, also real quick, don't you coach with the, or not coach, excuse me, aren't you one of the presenters for the TABC at one time? You did it twice, right? Yeah, I was at, um, so I presented at THSCA like three different yes, times. Uh, so I presented there like three different times. Um, and then there's this, uh, there's a basketball, um, site, uh, there's like a high school basketball website it's called Hardwood, Texas. Um, I did a zoom on, on that a couple years back. Um, so yeah, um, been in different spots, been able to present, um, in front of many different people and just kind of showcase, kind of share what we do. And what year were you the coach of the year for Texas? Uh, so I was a coach of the year in Texas, I believe in 2021, uh, right. I believe it was 2021. So, um, you know, that was a big honor just kind of being recognized as, as, as that throughout the state. Um, and, you know, obviously, um, winning helps and, and having great players helps. So, um, but yeah, that was a, that was certainly a, a great accomplishment. I just wanted to make that plug for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Appreciate a lot it. Of people don't, don't know that about you. <laughs> yeah, we try, like I said, you know, I, I don't post a lot of stuff about me, um, whether it's on my Twitter or, or things like that, you know, we try to keep it about our kids and stuff. And so we've won a lot of our coaching staff and things, they've won a lot of awards, but we try to keep it about our kids and our guys. Um, even, even like our win total here, like even with my win total, like I'm never going to post a deal or never want to make it about me. And, and we've reached, been fortunate enough to reach some milestones, but um, 
you know, never, never going to put that on, on, on myself. Um, you know, my time has passed, um, as far as playing and stuff like that. So we try to keep it about our kids. Well, coach, that's why I always tell y'all that's my job. <laughs> it's my job to recognize you guys. I think again, without on a serious note, without great coaches and leaders and men like yourself, um, again, it's bigger than basketball. So with that being said, I don't want, I don't want you to think that, you know, what you're doing doesn't go unnoticed. We do notice it. And I think you're doing a phenomenal job. And that's why I always try to make, you know, again, as I get into this media stuff, I want you to be known that, Hey, I'm gonna make sure I look out for not just you, but your program and what you're doing because you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. You guys have certainly grown some the basketball here in San Antonio and giving it a voice and giving it more eyes. And, and I think that's a good thing. I think the more eyes that are on, on programs and kids, it highlights them more, it gives them opportunities outside of, of, of high school. So um, I think the more eyes and exposure that kids get, um, that's always a good thing. Real quick, give me um two of your well, – no, just give me a few of you guys we can keep an eye on, and then we'll wrap it up. Sure, it's tough, man, because we, we got so many guys back. Uh, we only – you know, we, we only lost three guys from last year, so we got – we got our whole roster pretty much back. Um, you know, uh, we got Ivan, who's, who's a six eight guy, um, super athletic. You know, he kind of anchors our our defense. So, um, you know, obviously we got to have a, a big year from him. And we got Elijah Vavella. Uh, he'll be a four year starter here uh, once he gets out of football. Um, but like I said, we got a lot of guys back. You know, Gerald Gerald O'Neill started for us as a sophomore. Um, he's back. Um, Kenyon Jay, Jay Sean. Um, we got a lot of those guys back and then we got some, we got some really good ones that I think are going to make, the, um, I think they're gonna make a name for themselves. I think Devonte Pilcher, uh, he's probably, he's about a six, six, he's a six, six, uh, forward for us. Um, relatively unknown, but man, he's probably been the most improved player, um, from last year to now. And I, I think he's going to open up a lot of guy, uh, eyes, uh, Jordan Taylor, um, he, he's shooting the ball really well for us. And then we got a freshman that I think is as good as anybody, here in the city, uh, Jamari Bowens. Um, and so um, we got a lot of guys back from last year. Um, and then we got, you know, like I said, some youth coming up that's uh, that's extremely talented, man. So, uh, you know, I, I, I expect those guys to, to make a lot of leaps and bounds this year for sure. Yeah, for the next at least three years, I say three. Mm-hmm. You got uh, uh, a 20 yeah. uh, I didn't even mention, yeah, I didn't even mention the, you know, our, our, I didn't even mention our, our JV group, man. Uh, those guys are special. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of guys they always talk about the, the team that we're going to have this year, but man, that, that JV group, man, uh, that, that were, that a lot of them would not be on JV at a lot of, at a lot of other schools. But for us, we just got a lot of talent right now, but that freshman group last year, they lost one game. They were like 23 and one. Um, and so now they're kind of on this JV team and, and we still got some juniors that they're going to play with. I, I think that team is, is, is really talented, man. So I agree. I think the next three years, you know, we, we got a chance to, to be pretty good. Um, just got to keep those guys uh, stay working for sure. Well, we're not, I'm not going to give anybody uh, any uh, bulletin board material. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign off and keep us out of trouble, coach. Again, yeah. thank you again, man. Really. I really appreciate this time that you give, you have given and you taking out your day to spend with us. So, Again, man, thank you. Yeah, well, appreciate you season. guys. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me. Um, like I said, uh, always welcome at the at the practices, at the games. Just let me know, man. We'll take care of you guys. I appreciate, it, Coach. Hey, all I need is a Justin shirt. Just I, got you. I don't mind. I need a collared Justin shirt because you know I got my cold. Everybody got uh-huh. jealous of that anyway, but you know yeah. also too. So I need me a Justin one too. All right. No, send I got me, you. Send me the link for the website. I'll I'll order it. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Send me the link. I got man. you. I got you. All right, Coach. I appreciate it, bro. All Thanks. Right. All right, guys. Thanks. Playboy, you made that beat.